my demo i hope you guys like the way it sounded i never got my head too big i stayed grounded rocket in your house your headphones in your car rocket in your coffin in heaven under the stars rocket on the land or deep under the ocean come on give me some insight you know i'm always open i'm rocking for me for you and for the people we ain't better than anyone else we're just equal my mom used to say just do the best you can now i rock it as hard as i can for the fans and for the masses and for those who want to kick our asses regardless if they want to give us props or bashes there's only one i die for and that would be my mother i love her and not a goddamn thing can take me from her my friends my family and all of the above have helped me dynamics iq y'all much love All right. Tell, tell me, tell me. Okay. Just look at you? Yeah. You Not the camera? At look at oh, look at the camera. Does it look great if I look at the camera? Okay. Does my hair look all right? Yeah. What about my shirt? I'm just fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. Well, um, all through middle school, I, uh, I started skating, skateboarding, in, in sixth grade. And um, Eric and uh, Eric Brown and Chris Lopez, and all those guys, they were all the, the skaters of the school. So I just, like, by default, kind of started hanging out with them. And um... Yeah, I, I got a lot of funny stories about Eric. How many I can tell on the camera? Maybe half of one. <laughs> First memory I ever had of him was he went to Puerto Vallarta and pulled his groin and had to come back early. And was trying to skateboard when he could barely walk. I remember at Jack in the Box, and he just kept falling off a skateboard, and that's the first time I ever met Eric. So we moved in together in October, right before we got married. So all three of us moved into the house together. And um, he was really excited about moving onto the street because two of his closest friends lived right up the street. And uh, I think Andrew, you were still living on Loma Alta, uh, Johnson, so all of his good friends you know, were in the vicinity. He could walk out in his pajamas in the morning, and they'd take him to school, and he would go. <laughs> So. One day we get together and we come up to my house and like we record this song. It was pretty bad, but I mean it was pretty fun. Like we had a great time together and that was like the first time we really like hung out, you know. And uh, we just kept on doing stuff. And then uh, sophomore year and junior year, like we just started Mike Dynamics. Well, sophomore year, he's just like kind of guy you can tell right off, like just such a character, like right away. And uh, you know he's so unique in every way, you know. And the kid, I mean just down to even his hair colors. Like I remember always trying to bleach his hair, but his hair was always too dark. So he'd have to do it like two or three times, but first few times he didn't get it right, so his hair would come out like bright orange, like a pumpkin or something like that, you know? We always clowned on him, but he still turns it turned it into, he, he can still somehow pull it off, though, you know? Big, it was the fro, remember the fro? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I felt like, at that age, I think most kids are so conscious of what other people think of them that I felt like he was at a point in his life where he really didn't care what anyone thought, and I was so impressed that at 16, that's how he felt, that I, you know, people, my dad gave him a hard time about it, and people gave him a hard time, and I thought, he's totally who he is, and he's confident, and that's great. That's amazing. So I encouraged it. He was a funny guy. I really liked him in class because he'd always... Uh... He'd always be keeping you honest. Even when you thought he wasn't listening, he seemed to be listening. And, uh, and yeah, he was, he, was a natural, uh, he was a natural actor for sure.
I don't know. He always just, he always like knew how to talk to me and just, and how to like make me feel at ease when I'm with like these other guys who might, you know, like be making fun of me or something. And he would just always like, I don't know, just always be the, the nice guy of the entire, of, of the group. Eric always had that extra compliment and he just knew you know, Eric, you, Eric really made you feel like he really did care about you. We had a ping pong table and we had ping pong tournaments ah. through my pregnancy and after Grace was born and Grace would sit in her swing, you know, she was five or six weeks old. Mm -hmm. Ping pong balls would go flying past her and <laughs> it was really fun. We had a lot of fun. We played basketball when I was pregnant and I, he'd throw the football. He always wanted to throw the football and I'm, you know, nine months pregnant and he's just, just one more time, mommy, just one more time and I'd be like, okay, you know, trying to catch it out to the side. It was fun. We had a lot of fun here. We always ran my Honda, which is like this old 89 Honda. It's gold. It's like the ugliest car you'll ever see. But like, we didn't care. Like, we always drove around in it. And Eric was always in shotgun, always in shotgun. If someone else caught shotgun, he'd be like, nah, dude, I caught shotgun way before you, dude. And somehow he'd always get up the shotgun. It's just amazing. Like, the friendship that all five of us had was, was great. And we never thought anything would ever happen to us because, like, of the community we had the families we had, the friends that we had, like we had everything it was like perfect, you know? Um, it was the Tuesday before Thanksgiving and we had a five day break. I just remember coming out of sixth period and because I had to go right home because me and my brother had to get on a plane and meet my parents down in Palm Springs. I just remember Eric being like, you're gonna leave? You're, he's like, are you leaving? I'm like, yeah. And he, did, and he gave me a hug, and he said, just just come back as soon as you can, man. We have to, to chill, you know? And I was like, yeah, I know. Believe me, I want to come back. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. And he's like, that, that huge party's going on tonight. So I'm like, all right, cool. So a few hours later, I find a ride. He's already up there. And I get up there, and I'm like, we're just chilling up on the uh, deck. And this is huge. This party is huge. There's like 40 cars down the road. Uh, Eric and I and a bunch of our friends went up to that party together and um, I drove and when we got there everyone was drinking drinking 40s or fifths or whatever and um, Eric and I decided to join in and one of my friends took my keys and she decided to drive for the rest of the night actually we were all up on top of like there was like like on top of the garage there was like a like a deck kind of thing but we were all up there there was like a huge amount of us up there and you know Eric was there I saw Eric just before it happened you know and like uh, the whole group of girls that they had, like we all hung out with like Kellen and all of them and it was just like kind of a really cool mix of people older younger all over the place you know and it was it was like just any other party you know I mean lively it was pretty loud it was fun you know and I, we see this like dark car it's like fly up the road I was like, what is that? You know, like, there are so many cars. Like, what would a car be doing, like, driving that fast up that road? And then, like, the sirens go on, and we're just like, oh, shoot, we need to get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, normally when the cops come, it's not scary at all, but, like, like the sirens came on. And Lights, and people are drinking, and so it's even more scary, and everyone just bolted. I mean, it was like fury. Everyone just running around this way and that way, you know? And, and uh, police got all the way to the house and shining flashlights and stuff. We felt like criminals. And like, so we jetted and like, it was so funny just because like, I guess Eric was like running and he jumped into a bush and he's like, James Bond, dude. Just like, even at serious moments, he was always joking around, you know? Cause like, I don't know, it was, it was hilarious. So Eric and I got a little scared and we decided to, instead of walk right by the cops, to get to our car that was now waiting down the road, we would jump in another car of one of um, our peers. And I don't remember any of the drive. I don't know why we didn't stop in my car. Um, I don't know why we didn't take the turn that we were supposed to to get home. We tried to pass another car, hit the guardrail, and went airborne for 50 feet into a telephone pole head on. And Eric and I went flying because we weren't in seat belts. And um, I hit the dashboard feet first. Eric hit the back of one of the solid steel seats head first.
That's why I'm going to have trouble. We got a phone call from the hospital. The ambulance that Kellen was in had just gotten there. She was out of the ambulance, uh, lying, strapped, with all the gear on, including the, the face mask, the headgear, the neck collar. Um, and it was, 